What's up everybody? Welcome back or to the channel. So today we're going to be starting a new project. Now this one is going to be an electrical project. Now for some of you that might be new to the channel and don't know, I'm always doing different projects, whether it's around the house, whether it's customizing trucks, cars, motorcycles, ATVs, I'm always doing some type of project. But this next project I'm going to be getting into is going to be related to powder coating because I do want to teach myself how to do powder coating so that I could do a lot of this custom stuff at home in my own garage instead of always paying somebody else to do it. I want to learn how to do it myself because it's something that I've always wanted to learn how to do and it's something that I think that I would enjoy. So one of the first steps that I need to do in this powder coating venture, I need to get a heavy duty 220 outlet into my garage. And what we're going to be doing today is adding a transfer switch to an existing 220 line so that I could piggyback off of that and bring power into my garage. Now, the reason that we're doing it this way is because eventually I have plans on putting in a very large three car garage metal pool barn building over here in the field. So if that happens, which I'm hoping it does, I'm gonna get a separate electric service put into that garage for powder coating and other things that I plan on using it for. But in this garage, I just need something as a temporary fix because I'm not doing powder coating all the time. I'm primarily using this as a once in a while situation as I'm teaching myself how to powder coat smaller parts. So without further ado, let's just jump in and I'll show you exactly what I have up my sleeve. Okay, so here's what we're doing. So right here is a double wall oven that I purchased used off of Facebook Marketplace. My goal is to convert this double oven into a single oven, but we're gonna do that in a separate video. So if you're interested in watching how I accomplished that, stay tuned, subscribe to the channel because that will be coming very soon. And as you can see here, I have my powder coating gun already set up here. I got my infrared camera and I have some other parts on the way. But back to what we're trying to do today. So I don't have a 220 line in this garage now. However, behind this wall over here, like literally right behind this wall is my laundry room. I thought I was gonna be able to piggyback into that outlet, but I found out that that's running a little bit of a smaller diameter wire with a 30 amp fuse. So that outlet's not going to work for me. Over here, right behind this wall, pretty much right here where my finger is, is my double wall oven for my kitchen inside the house. So if you follow that straight down into the basement down over here, I have full access to that 220 line. So what I want to do is add a transfer switch down in the basement into that 220 line and then bring a new line out here along this wall and potentially make it over here. It depends on how much wire I have left, but somewhere in this general area, I'll be mounting my box with my 220 outlet. So I got a bunch of stuff here that I got to try to do this. And then over here in this box over here, I have my wire. So as you can see over here, I have a bunch of stuff. I'm not sure I'm gonna use all this. I just bought a bunch of random stuff just in case. So as you can see over here, I have three one inch thick schedule 40 electrical conduit pieces here in 10 foot lengths. Okay, so let me just show you what I'm working with down here in the basement. Okay. Right there, that gray line right there, that's the 220 line that's coming over and up into the electric oven. So I'll probably be cutting that line somewhere in here and then putting my transfer switch up here mounted to the ceiling and then I'll run my extension wire through the wall out towards the garage. So the main reason why I didn't wanna do a dedicated outlet from this door all the way over here Sorry for the mess, I'm still working on finishing my basement. There's my theater room area over here. If you come back here to where my fuse panel is behind the theater screen here, here's my fuse box. Okay, here we go. Double oven, 1921, 1921. There's my 50 amp breaker right there. So from this fuse panel, if I were to run a dedicated line, I'd have to come all the way over here come up around here and wrap it around over here and take a straight shot over here. And by the time I come all the way over here to get back over to here and then through the 
garage door and then up the steps, not in the garage. I mean, we're talking a hundred feet and that costs a lot of money. A six four wire can run anywhere between say seven and $10 a foot. So do the math, a hundred feet at seven to $10 a foot, that adds up. Plus, if you order it online, you gotta pay for shipping. And because of the weight of the 6.4 wire at that length, you're probably gonna have $100 easy in just shipping charges. So we're talking anywhere from about $800 to $1,000 in just wire. But as I said before, right above this door is the 6.4 wire that's going to my kitchen wall oven. So if I could tap into that, I won't need all the wire and all the extra materials. I could just add a transfer switch up into this wire and we'll be good to go. So let's take a little closer look at this and see what we can come up with. Now, most of these double wall ovens typically are gonna be using a 50 amp breaker and usually an 8.3 or an 8.4 wire. However, to install a dedicated line from the fuse box out here, I would need well over 100 foot of wire that length of wire is gonna require me to go down and gauge and get something even bigger and jump up to at least a 6.3 or a 6.4, which is what we have over here. So if I pull this out, I'll show you what I got here. I ordered this online. Okay, here we go, sorry about that. This is real heavy duty 6.4 wire, as you can see right here. Now this stuff is not cheap, I will say that which is why I decided to do it this way, because knowing that I'm gonna to try to do a garage out here, hopefully next year or so, and I'll be moving a lot of the powder coating stuff out there, I didn't need to invest that much money into a dedicated 220 line in this garage. Now, as far as the transfer switch, we're using this here, which I got off Amazon, okay? Looks like this. Now, this is gonna have 16 poles on it, so the goal of how this transfer switch works is you're gonna bring your power into one side, probably down here on the right, but I'll have to do some research on where it goes. But essentially, bear with me, you're gonna have either your 6.3 wire or 6.4 wire coming in down here. Then we'll have to get some smaller wire and jump it from here over to the top. By doing power in and then jumping it to the top, on the opposite side, we're gonna have power across the bottom and power across the top. So what we're gonna do is maybe across the bottom, I'll plug back in the wire that was going to my kitchen. And then on the top, I'll plug the new wire that's going to the garage. Then once you have it mounted, I can switch between which oven I wanna have power to. So that's basically how this switch is gonna work. And then in this container here, Okay, take it out. We have our box for the switch. So basically this right here goes into there, okay? And then after you take this plate off, it mounts to the front here. So then I'll have a nice switch to just reach up onto the ceiling and flip the switch to whichever oven I plan on using, okay? And then I just bought a regular outlet plug like this that I can use when plugging into the back of my oven here. Okay, which is right here. All right, so I'll plug that in, create my own plug here. That's what that is, okay? Set that aside. And then we have our wall outlet box, which is gonna go on the wall with our new outlet, which is right here that'll go out here with a new cover. So that's all the parts I'm gonna be using there. So that's basically what we're gonna to try to do. Again, I don't know how much of this I'm gonna use. I don't exactly know how I'm gonna run it 100%. It's pretty much something I'll figure out as I'm involved in doing it. So what I'm gonna do first, I'll turn off the breaker that sends power to this oven here so that I can go down in the basement and splice into that wire and start doing all my wiring. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the work and then we'll come right back in the video and I'll show you what I did. So we'll be back here shortly. Okay, so I'm back. I was playing around with a few things and this is what I come up with. Originally, I was gonna run the conduit through the wall down here, all the way along over here, over here, and up here with an outlet. Once I go through that wall on the 
opposite side inside the basement, I was gonna splice into the outlet over here. So after looking at everything and seeing how much wire I was going to use, it actually makes much more sense to not do it this way. I could go ahead and return all of the conduit because I'm not gonna need it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and cut through the wall right here, a small hole, and put my transfer switch and my electrical outlet right over here inside the wall, basically right below where the original outlet is on the inside of the house. And that way I will only need probably about five feet of wire or so. And then I'll need my transfer switch, my transfer box, and the outlet switch and outlet box. And I'll put them right here. I'll cut them right into the wall and I'll just screw them into the wall stud right in here. And I'll just keep my outlet there. Because again, this is just going to be a temporary 220 line in my garage for when I'm powder coating once in a while. It's not something I'm gonna need all the time because again, I plan on getting a garage over here in the field in the next year or so. So it just seems to work out better and it's gonna be a lot cheaper. So if you come here and look, I actually went ahead and pulled my double wall oven out of the cabinet here so I can get an idea of where my outlet is, which is right there. Took a few measurements and as you can see right and this wall is where my main line is. So that's going to be the easiest thing that I can do is tap in right there. And we're just going to try that out. So let me go ahead and see if I can cut a couple small holes in the wall and see what we're working with. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and I just cut out a square hole, just enough to fit my new transfer box. And I actually measured it pretty much good because I'm right here on a wall stud. There's the wire right there that went to my stove. I actually went ahead and disconnected it from my stove. So now I can pull it through. And these wires are so big. Okay, so there we go. This is the power that comes through my basement that did originally go to my interior kitchen double oven. So I disconnected it from the oven because the outlet box for the oven is right above it up here on the inside of the house. So now this will be my power in to my transfer switch. But essentially we're gonna have power that goes in, then we're gonna have to get a piece of wire that'll jump from here up to the top. So this will be our power in. Then on the opposite side, we're gonna have a set of wire coming out back to my kitchen wall oven. And the bottom section will go to the new switch that will power the garage oven for powder coating. And again, the goal is to have this box inside the wall, and then I'll have the outlet down here right below it. And then we should be able to come out here whenever we wanna use it, flip the switch that turns off the kitchen oven, turns on the garage oven, and then down here will be our outlet, we'll plug in, and then we should be good to go for powder coating. So let me keep working on this and we'll be back here shortly. Okay, so here's where we're at so far. So I have the hole cut out here, and I have the hole cut out below with the box already installed in the wall. So the power coming from the basement is this gray wire right here. I have it hooked up to the bottom row, which on the top of this unit, I marked top. Okay, as you can see right there, just so I knew that the switch position right now is in the neutral or zero position. That's the top. And then I put P's for power on the right side. It's just something I did for me to remember. So the bottom is where the power comes in. I have the red at the far left, then the black, then the white, then the ground. And then I did a loop right here from the bottom red to the top, the black from the bottom to the top, the white bottom to the top, and the green or copper from the bottom to the top. Just like that, I created a loop. Maybe that helps some of you out there, okay? That's the power side. Now on the opposite side, this side is what goes to the actual appliances I plan on running. So this bottom piece here, that's why I have little ones and then twos. So the whole top is one appliance, the whole bottom is the second appliance. So the way I have it hooked up is I have this wire right here, my thumbs tapping, I have them color coordinated to the other side where the power is. So the red is on the red side, the black, the white, and green for ground. So that is what's gonna go up through here, up behind the wall and into my house for my wall oven in the house. This position right here 
that's hanging out the box right here. That's gonna go down the wall into this box and into my switch that I'm gonna use for the garage. So, so far so good. I have everything hooked up. I'm hoping this works. I think it's gonna work. So let me go ahead and get the wires at least put through, hooked up to a switch and put back through and hooked up back into the kitchen. We'll go ahead and flip the switch at the breaker box to give us power and then we'll test it out. So let me go do that and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. So I got everything pretty much taken care of. Everything is all wired up. I got the boxes put in, I got the switch put in. Okay, so on this side over here, we have the actual power wire coming in right here with the gray sheath. That is mounted to the side along the bottom. I don't think there's really a specific way to put them in, but depending on the switch you ultimately end up buying, they might have a different diagram. But I have the red, black, white, and ground across the bottom like that. So the red's all the way to the left, then the black is second, the white is third, and the green or ground is last, okay? Then I added jumpers from the red bottom to the top, black bottom to the top, white bottom to the top, green or ground from the bottom to the top. So that's what the right side is. Now, as I mentioned before, I have it labeled as the top, and then I labeled P's across the right side, so I knew that was my power in. My main power is coming in on the right side. Over here on the left side, this is what I did. So I have this piece right here, which I cut off the excess power wire that was inside the wall for the oven in the kitchen. I cut about a two foot section of this because it goes from here down to this switch. So I took the red right here on the bottom, to match up with the red. Again, just look at it in a series. There's red, black, white, green. We got red, black, white, green would technically be the ground. So I have it on the bottom. So as you can see here, I have the top labeled one, the bottom labeled two. Again, you don't have to label them like I did. I did it so that I didn't forget which one was what. So this bottom one here, okay, red, black, white, ground, is going to that switch right here, which I wired in in the back. The top one here is new wire that I put in. From here, it goes right up here to about right here, and then it goes in about a foot into the cabinet that holds the, up, the wall oven, and I have everything wired into a junction box in there and put back in the wall. So this one here goes to the kitchen oven. This one here goes to this switch, which I can use when I'm running that oven. The switch here, right in the middle, is gonna be neutral or zero. So if you leave it in the middle like this, everything's turned off. Neither oven has power. So let's go ahead and try this out. Now I actually think that the switch over here, I think that's number two, is gonna to go to this outlet here. So we're just gonna go ahead and turn that on. And then I got a little voltmeter here. So we have power there. Okay, if I put it back in the middle, which is the neutral, nothing. Turn it back to this one, we have power. So let's put it back in the middle. Now let's go to the left, the top down and go check out the kitchen oven over here. There we go. Everything's working, okay? As you can see, I just have junction box up there all wired in, so we're good to go. So as you can see, everything's working pretty good. So all I have to do now is go back down the basement, turn off the power one more time. That way I can get everything tucked into the wall, put the covers back on and clean everything up. So once I do that, we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. So again, I got everything hooked up over here with the transfer switch and the new outlet in the wall. So everything's been tested, everything works perfectly fine. The number one switch position here that's switched to the left gives power to my kitchen wall oven. Once I switch this switch over to switch number two, that shuts the power off to my kitchen oven and turns power onto this exterior garage outlet, which I'll be running to this oven for powder coating. So now that all that is done, now we gotta work on getting new wire hooked into the back of this oven. Now I thought about piggybacking off of this, but I think what I'm gonna do is disconnect the wires from there since I have all this extra 6-4 wire over here and basically create a long extension wire 
from the oven to the outlet. So I could always just cut it short so it's this distance, but one of my future goals here is to be able to build a rack that'll hold and support this wall oven with wheels. That way I can move this oven, you know, over closer to the door if I want more fresh air to let it vent when I'm powder coating or wherever I want. So being that I have all this extra wire, I could always use five or 10 feet of this and then try to sell the other 10 or 15 feet of it online, or just go ahead and use it all as one long extension cord with a plug. And that way, no matter where I wanna put this oven, anywhere in my garage, or even just like out here a little bit more for ventilation purposes, this extension wire here will reach to that plug right there. So that's ultimately the goal. So today what we gotta work on doing now is getting our plug right here, wired into here, and then we'll get the other end wired into the back of the oven. This one seems pretty easy. Again, I'll put a link in the description for this plug of where I got it. But basically all you have to do is feed your wire in from the bottom over here and then connect it to each one of these prongs using the supplied information right here. Now, this right here, this bottom piece here, that's a straight shaft. But if you look over here on this outlet, it has that 90 degree L shape bottom bracket. So all you have to do is take this right here, which is the bottom piece, pull that shaft out, set it aside. This plug actually came with an extra piece that you're gonna go ahead and stick in, just like that. So now I have the L shape that I'm going for. So when I plug it in, it's got the L shape needed for added security. So now all I have to do is strip away some of this sheathing right here, probably about this much, open up my wires, feed them through, wire them into the designated areas, bolt everything back down, and we should be good to go. Okay, so this is what we got so far. So again, as you can see here, the ground is gonna be a little bit longer, the black and red are about medium length, and then your white neutral is gonna be the shortest. So once you get that all mounted in there nice and tight, everything will fit. Go ahead, tighten down your bottom clamp, and then you're gonna stick your top clamp on. And then it has these openings in the back that line up with the back of these pegs here, just to keep everything nice and straight. Once you get all that mounted back on, tighten it all up, and we'll move on to attaching the other end to the stove. Okay, so we went ahead and I took the back panel off. I have a panel here, and I have a top panel here. Basically, just took these panels off right here, and they're held in with just a bunch of these little tiny screws here. So we took all that off because I wanted access to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the, the red, white, and black from this power bar here. And there's the ground right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect those, pull that wire out. Then I'm gonna take my new wire over here, feed that through here, and then reconnect it right there, tighten everything back down. So let me do that and we'll be right back. Okay, so we went ahead and I just got my main 6-4 power cord here with protective sheath bolted in through the back, brought it up through the top. I actually had to go to the store and buy some new crimp fittings because I didn't have anything that was big enough. So I just went ahead and grabbed these right here. If that helps you out. These ones here work perfect for the six gauge wire. So I don't have any crimps that were big enough to fit this. So I basically just brought my vise over here, laid them down and smashed them with a hammer. They're all nice and good. Everything's nice and tight, so I'm gonna go ahead, electrical tape them up, electrical tape up the rest of these wires, get them bolted in, get everything put back together, and we should be done. So let me finish up, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we are done. I got everything put back together. I got my wires bolted down, and we got the whole back of the oven bolted back down as well. So everything's put back together real nice. We're all good to go. So I have the wire up here. I have some of it just pretty much zip tied together into a spool for now because I don't need it just yet, but I left some of it loose so I can make it over here to the outlet. So as you can see here, nothing's on. Let me go ahead and plug this in. Okay. So as you can see here, nothing is on right now. Everything is still off with no power let's go up turn our transfer switch over to oven number two there we go let it reset give it a second here and we are good we have power in the oven 
and we are good to go. So now I can actually come out here and start powder coating right now. Now the main thing I'm gonna do now is just do some smaller parts. But in the very near future, I do want to do a project on this oven. I'm gonna take out all the racks, take apart a lot of the outside housing because I wanna pull the drum out of here and the drum out of the bottom. We're gonna cut it and we're gonna take our doors off. We're gonna mount them together. I have some brackets here and some very thick gauge, 16 gauge metal and some metal foil tape here as well. And then my goal is to convert a double oven into one large single oven. So stay tuned for that if that's something you're interested in doing. But so far, the oven works, we got power, everything's cleaned, everything's good to go. And then whenever I'm done using the oven over here, all we gotta do is come over here, put it back on one, now we got power back into the kitchen wall oven and we're good to go. So, so far, this project went pretty easy. It is a little harder working with six gauge wire. Now keep in mind, the only reason I'm working with six gauge wire is because the wire that was already in the wall that went to my kitchen wall oven was a six gauge wire. So I wanted to keep the same gauge being that I'm splicing in with that transfer switch. So that's why I went with the six floor wire because the original goal was to put that switch in the basement and then cut a hole through the wall over here and run some conduit along the wall over here and wire the switch in over here. But I think I only ordered like 25 or 30 feet of the six floor wire and it just wasn't long enough to get over the here. So my switch would end up being over here anyways. Then I started thinking I don't have enough wire connected to the oven. So after doing a little thinking and trying to find the best way to do this, it actually worked out better just to put the transfer switch up here, put my 220 outlet right below it, and then use the wire that I have as a long extension cord. Now, if you only have like a three or four foot lead off the back of your oven plugging into your outlet, you don't need a six gauge wire. I opted to keep the six gauge wire because I have roughly 20 foot of wire here so that I can plug it in over here. But if I wanted to, after I build a stand with wheels, I can move the oven over here out towards the door. So that way, if I'm powder coating and we're getting some odors from the powder coat oven as it's baking, it'll actually ventilate better over here. And then when I'm done, I can push it back over here unplug it and spool it up and be good to go. So overall, this project turned out really good and I'm pretty pleased with it. Okay, everybody, so we are done. So we got this whole entire electrical project taken care of. It pretty much took me all of yesterday evening and then I finished up this morning and we got it all done. So again, the main purpose of this transfer switch was to give me a selectable power source to get a 220 outlet into my garage. This project was really to create a temporary 220 outlet in the garage. And the reason I say temporary is because again, eventually I wanna put a garage building out in the field and have a separate service out there. So this outlet here would only be used on a case by case basis, not all the time. So I could turn the switch, keep my wall oven in the kitchen on all the time. And then in that once in a while situation where I need to use the garage 220 outlet, I flip the switch, cuts power off to the kitchen oven, sends power to the garage oven. I do my project, when I'm done, I flip the switch back, unplug it, and we're good to go. So if you happen to have a 220 outlet near or adjacent to your garage wall, you might wanna consider doing a transfer switch like this because it's very inexpensive and it's gonna save you a lot more money compared to running a dedicated 220 line from your fuse panel to possibly your garage, depending on where your fuse panel is. Again, my fuse panel is probably a good 70 to 80 feet away from my garage. So if I were to do a dedicated 220 outlet in my garage, I would have well over $1,000 invested into doing so. I'd probably have close to $1,000 just in the wire to do it, plus everything else that I would need. But overall, this project went pretty good and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So that's it for today's video. I hope this video helps some of you out if you're thinking about doing something very similar. If you happen to have any questions, go ahead and put it in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And also do me a favor, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell because it definitely helps me out and I greatly appreciate it. So that's it for today's video. I just wanna say thank you to each and every one of you one more time. Thank you, I truly appreciate you all. And as always, see you in the next video.